You doing well? All right, a couple things, a uh, couple things to talk about. We won't drag it uh, too long here. Uh, we was, I had to cancel Tuesday. Figured maybe get a, an extra couple days. Something maybe opens up in this market, uh, give us something interesting to talk about. But uh, it's been more of uh, the same for the most part. All right. Uh, before we get into um, some of, I wouldn't say the more important stuff, but some of the stuff I'm, I'm, I like to keep my eye on, uh, bigger picture positioning sort of stuff, uh, the rotation, you guys know, we've been talking about it the last couple of weeks. Uh, ever since tech really has exploded uh, to the upside here, uh, you know, they're, it pretty much eliminated any of uh, offside positioning out there. Uh, that reopening trade uh, was overdone, significantly overdone. Um, and that's what, you know, lit the fire behind uh, tech over the last few weeks, maybe even a month now, the way these weeks fly by. Um, so before we get into that, uh, we'll look at some of that client positioning stuff uh, so you guys can see what's going on. Uh, let's just talk about the market, especially those of you who are members. Um, so you can make a little sense out of what I've been talking about the last few days, um, what McElliott had to say. I know, Tree, if you're out there, uh, he really threw you for a loop. He throws everybody for a loop uh, almost always. Uh, but this could have been a little, a little more tricky. Uh, so... We really don't have uh, much, I'm trying to find the, the easiest way to put things in simple English. You have a market here that if there was weakness, okay, in the price action, you would actually have a pretty decent setup taking place. You know, so in other words, what I'm saying is if the market wasn't at new highs, uh, with a lot of the noise that's out there uh, on the yield front, on the Delta COVID variant front, um, you know, you got a lot of uh, China, right? You got a lot of things out there um, that are really keeping the bulls in check. And we're seeing that in a lot of the sentiment readings uh, that we follow. Okay. Uh, I think the thing that's been shooting basically shooting itself in its foot is that you know, no matter how negative the noise can try to get people and it has um you know the price action right a market basically at new highs you're not going to get that extreme that you're looking for on the sentiment side you're not going to reel in those bears you're going to keep bulls in check but you're not going to reel in those shorts and the bears. And we see that right on a lot of the short measures out there. Um, SPY the sh and the Qs, the shorts have been wiped out completely. Uh, the only thing left is basically IWM, uh, the Russell, the small caps. Um, that's the only outstanding uh, significant short position in the indexes. Um, you know, you had a nice little bump up in SPY and the Qs prior uh, to this rally, okay? Uh, but that's been completely wiped out, especially in the in the queues. Uh, so you're not with, you know, with the queues at highs right now, you're not gonna get to a place uh, where it puts in that, at least that temporary floor we can play off of, right? So if we had that weakness, even something like this, okay, a little pullback like that, um, and you get, you reel in enough of those tactical bears, you know, we can play off this low where sentiment is favorable, accommodating, right? And, you know, look for upside, right? We even have gamma there too. We talk about that, you know, how we use gamma, right? We look, we look for um, gamma to line up with sentiment, okay? Because it usually does. Um, and there's a lot of stuff out there that usually is not supposed to be visible in a market 
where we're at right now. Um, and I'll show you guys, there's, there's a lot of things, you know, you guys look at this, the fear greed model, right? And you see it's, you know, according to some, it's already just recently been, you know, fired off a bullish signal. Um, and, you know, you got to market at new highs. All right. So even if we had something like this, we actually would have a decent setup. We'd have a decent setup. I think the problem we have is, you know, there could be weakness, right, um, over the short term, okay? And I'm talking more on the tactical side than anything else right now. Uh, but I think, you know, from what we're seeing, we need to be buyers of that weakness. I think that's the opportunity on the tactical side, all right? So in other words, like, Buying this, your risk is that weakness that we see from time to time, okay? Where you get some selling in the indices. I got to remember I'm not talking to all members here. Uh, but you get some selling in the indices and we get, you know, bullish anti-VIX and uh, tactical sentiment bullish signals, which are short-term sentiment signals we look at, Um you know, a spike in the put the call and, you know, where we're at right now, that needs to be bought, you know, that you got to find an entry in something, uh, even if it's, you know, if you're playing it on an intraday basis, um, that's the area we got to look to get long of something and play it from there. And from that point, as we rally away, it gets, a lot more difficult in individual names. Forget about that. That's been a disaster. I've been scratching myself to death in individual names of late. Um, meaning, you know, small winner, small loser, small winner, small loser, spinning my wheels. Uh, but in the S&P 500, right, in the major indices, um, our risk here is that you get that little wash. All right, so if you're sitting long or you're looking to chase long, that's the risk. But when you do get that pull, um, you know, with, with the information we have in front of us, right, we could get hit with a nuclear bomb tomorrow and that changes the whole game plan. Uh, but with the information we have in front of us, that's where you need to get or find a long somewhere if, you could, uh, if you're interested in playing right now out there. All right. Uh, on a day to day basis, as we've been saying, you know, this is the type of market you kind of want to evaluate almost on a day to day basis, because uh, that's how crazy and frustrating it's been out there um, from sector to sector, you know, individual name to individual name, uh, but even the market itself. OK, because I'll give you an example. Um, and this is kind of what I was talking about. Of the last couple of days. We had recently those bullish sentiment signals right off the last little drawdown uh, that lasted a half a day. Um, we rallied off that and we've kind of just been, you know, chopping around of recent, right? These last couple of days I'm talking about here. Uh, what chart should I pull up that will show it best? Maybe this. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So, right, so th this is what I mean. You had this. This is where you're looking to get long of something. Then you get this. Now this gets trickier, right? Especially when you start breaking it down in names and sectors. Um, but what we've had, we've had this consolidation here, okay? And what we've been seeing is a couple things, right? And I'm no gamma aficionado, but this is the way um, I use and a lot of us use gamma in uh, the steam room. Again, I, I follow people and know people who uh, know gamma well and flows well, so that helps. But where am I here? All right, so we came into today, um, you guys who know we follow this Nova Ursa, right? S&P 500 positioning over the short term. Uh, when they lean a bit short, 
they like to get run over almost always, right? Especially in like bull markets. They, they, every time they stick out their neck in either direction, uh, you can expect a quick move the other way, right? Okay, not a lasting move because you'll see this adjust the next morning, but a quick move. They're just really late to the party, right? And some of the more volatile markets, you'll see bigger movement. And ultimately those setups are a lot stronger and do have lasting power, okay? But in the market like we're in right now with no correction, um, they stick out their neck a little bit in either direction, they get run over. So you had that yesterday off Fed's Clarita ultra hawkish comments that put a little fear into uh, the price action in the market yesterday, right? So you had them lean a little bit on the short side and do I have the regular gamma chart? I don't have the regular gamma chart. All right, so this is kind of, uh, this will give us this will give you a better, a little bit of an idea, right? So this is what I'm talking about in regards to uh, the dealer flows in gamma, okay? This red line here, all right? This is an area we look to buy off bullish sentiment always, right? So any weakness there, Right, we're looking to be buyers. There's going to be that one time where there's an exogenous event, and gamma is going to work in the other direction in a negative, a bearish way, and that's where you get drawdowns and pulls like COVID and stuff like that. All right, but we're not even there on the positioning front anyway. That's a whole other story. So you have low gamma exposure, and what happens is if they can get the ball rolling in the other direction, right? You can get this little chase type thing, right? They screwed me today because on ES, it came literally in the last 15 minutes of the effing day, okay? So I got screwed. But, you know, that's what I'm looking for or that's what we should all be looking for um, while gamma remains low. You know what I mean? Uh, let me get the other chart. I'll show you guys better. I'm trying to explain it on that chart. It's not working. Hold on. So you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. The sentiment trader chart I want. Hold on. Where the hell is it now? Hold on. I'm coming. Oh, it should be over here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I didn't have a chance to get these all ready beforehand. It would have made all our lives a lot easier. What am I here? Let me do this. Okay, here we go. So this is this is not up to date, but just so you guys get an idea, gamma is over here right now, coming into today, somewhere over here, I think. Okay. So by August expiration, okay, we got some time. Okay, what we basically what we're the game plan for us, what we want to do. Okay, we want to be buyers on any dip towards that zero gamma mark, okay? For the reasons you guys know, right? That we're betting that this bullish posture in the overall indice, especially the S&P 500, that buyers are gonna show up and there's not gonna be that cascade to the downside because we don't see it in positioning, right? 
unless there's some news or something that we're going to be aware of at the time, we don't see that. We just don't see that happening right now. It's not in the cards. Well, the probability is not there is what the best way I should put it, right? So what we want to do is we want to be buyers, right? Anything close to that zero gamma. And what we're looking to catch is this, okay? An increase in gamma exposure into August expiration, okay? So with the evidence we have in front of us from everything we look at on a day-to-day -day basis, that's what, that, those are, that's the puzzle that we're looking to put the pieces together for. Make sense? Okay. And then what happens is if this does play out, um, you got a chance by the week, I should say, of August expiration, where it can open up the window for some downside or higher volatility. All right, but in the meantime, we want to be buyers, again, on a tactical basis. We want to be buyers here, and we want to try, even if we do it on an intraday basis with less risk, we want to try to catch this increasing gamma exposure if it comes. Okay, and we got winds. Um, August expiration is what, what week exactly? What's the uh, day? 20th. Wow. So it starts the 16th though, Mason? That's the Monday? Wow. So we got, we got some time, huh? All right. And what's going to happen, right? We see this, we see this all the time. What happens is as this happens, okay, you're going to get that really, really sticky price action. Like you think this is bad now. This is not bad because you have, where's the hour? You have this, right? Okay, you have this, right? There's, there's actually been some movement, net, net. We haven't really gone anywhere, but there's been some movement. When you get that elevated gamma as you approach August Expo, okay, you're going to get that gap up and sit sticky price action. You know what I mean? Oh, the reason I said wow is we got a lot more time than I thought. That's why I said wow regarding when you guys told me the date. So we got, you know, we got some time here. Okay. And then, right. And then, um, the risk, and I think, and this is what Mick Elliott was talking about today. Um, actually, I think it was yesterday, the note. Um, Mick Elliott was talking about how the market is just pinned, basically. And eventually, it should open up come the August expiration. But there's a chance it might not even open up because there's not going to be a huge amount of gamma that rolls off as of now anyway. So Miguel was just talking about a lot of what we're talking about. Um, and, you know, straddles, right? It's been the market of straddles. So that's, you know, does that make sense? Again, and what we're trying to do, the moves, you know, I don't, I don't know, again, I have no information to say that whether or not 
the move to the upside is going to be strong or not. Okay, I really, because, you know, Gamma doesn't really say anything about that. The flow has been a menagerie, and that's more for earning because of earning season than anything else. Um, but I got nothing there that I'm basic, I can base that off of. Uh, positioning, there's nothing there anymore, right? There was a big possible squeeze in on the growth and tech end, but now when we'll look at that a little bit more when we're done here, that's not there. So the, there's no evidence out there. Again, I'd just be talking out of my rear end um, if I was to tell you, oh yeah, we're gonna just rip higher into the August expiration. You know, I don't know if it ends up becoming a rip, okay? But what I think the way we want to play it is any sort of drawdown or weakness to zero gamma, right? Or near zero gamma, especially when we have our short-term sentiment indicators accommodating. Um, that's where you want to look for entries, okay? If you have intentions of holding anything and trying to make any sort of money, Right, because like somebody said, there's just no juice. There's no juice, right? So that's your entry, okay? This is your entry. Oh, you know what's good about this? When was this? Because here's your entry. This is what I'm talking about. This was on August 2nd, okay? We're here now and right around here, okay? So August 2nd, this is a good example. I pulled this chart up randomly um, and this is a great example. Look at the second, okay? So this is into this right here, right? I'm so dizzy. I don't even know what day I'm in. I don't know. All right? So this was the drawdown, all right? And that's where you're looking for an entry that's where your best entry is going to come from if you're looking to hold on to anything from now until the August expiration. Right, exactly. Exactly, Hussein. Exactly. That's where we got the uh, sentiment signals. Exactly. So it lined up um, pretty well with it. You know? And again, you don't worry about being as exact. I, I got the same problem because I like to trade more on an intraday basis in this type of climate. Um, but if you're not, don't worry about being a little too early, right? Because like, even if you bought here and you were a little bit early, you're still, you're still gonna get paid, you know? Because you, you're willing to hold that. Um, but for us looking to be more tactical and maybe not hold, right? And trade through that, um, we need to do it on a day-to-day -day basis. Right, so we got to look for that on a day-to-day -day basis, you know. Try to buy the the dead periods of time, the 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 fades, all that stuff, um, and then try to catch what I missed today, basically. Okay, because if you caught all of this today, that's that would have been nice, you know. That would have been nice this whole piece I missed. Yeah, Gamma, exactly. And, and, and that's the bet um, Hussein that we're making, that by August expiration, based on the information we have right now, again, it can change, but what we're seeing right now is these are gonna play out, okay? We don't see enough on the sentiment side or the positioning side, Hussein, that tells us that this signal is gonna fail, right? We don't see anything. We see sentiment becoming more accommodating, more favorable, if anything. And on the positioning side, you know, we hear from the Gamma Gang and crew every morning, people, players are lathered up in protection on every downtick. You know, so that increases 
the probability and the odds that we're not going to get um, a COVID type crash off low gamma or um, a VIX explosion off low gamma. Yeah, I mean, we got the jobs number tomorrow. We had a couple of those numbers leading up to it. So it kind of softens the blow a little bit, um, but we'll see, you know, maybe there's some selling and we'll take that. Yeah, it's, that's, it's important information, Hussein. You know what I mean? This market, especially a market where, you know, less fundamentals, all liquidity is, might be the only thing that even matters anymore, you know, but these are the stuff we need to really pay attention to, you know, how players are positioned, right? Are they lathered in protection or they have no protection? You know, what's the money flows look like, right? Where's the buying? Where are they sitting? Where aren't they sitting? And, you know, gamma is a piece of that puzzle because it tells us a lot of that information too. So these are the things we need to pay attention to now. Um, again, until we get to the August expiration, especially, there's, no, there's nothing else right now to pay attention to. There's nothing. Like individual names, I don't know about you guys, like for the last, I would say, since AMD has hatched, right? We had a nice little stretch there for a couple of weeks where we were playing those tech names. That's when AMD was catching action. Twitter was catching action this, before earnings season. That was before earnings season or right at the start, right? But since then, I, I can't do a damn thing. I can't do a damn thing right in individual names. I, I just can't. I'm spinning my wheels. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm spinning my wheels, you know? So the only... The only little success I've had is with the overall market. And again, you know, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about home runs by no means, you know, but names to get it. Yeah, right. So that, that's what, Jared, that's exactly like what I've been running into names. I get a setup like Square where the flow, they're bombing it. I get in the middle and I make some money. And then, you know, I get involved in another name that has earnings, that's catching action, has a little pop, and then goes dead, you know? So it's, there's no fluidity, you know? It's so random. It's so random. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. You know, but, you know, We've been talking about this. This is not, you know, the easiest of markets out there. You understand? Forget about even all the noise out there. You just, you have a market that hasn't corrected. I mean, we've been going on a stretch now of a 5% correction we haven't had. And you have a lot of randomness in individual names. Right. You have um, mRNA blasting right you got amd blasting then you know you have other names that look like they were ready to go and hit the brakes you got half the market that uh aicha did you switch over remind me at the end uh aicha i'll explain to you or if norse is on here norse might be able to help you but remind me before we go Norse and Matt can help you, I just. Um, a lot of randomness where, you know, names look like they were ready to rip, but that's earnings, guys, too. Like, right, AMD, it didn't look like it the day after re they reported. I still can't believe the stock was down off earnings. You guys realize that? The stock was down and then went red to green and went parabolic. It wasn't a gap and go. That's the most amazing thing about this AMD move. Like you could have bought this down off earnings right here.
Yeah, Penn did it today, right? Exactly. Off news and everything. So, you know, but come on. You know, AMD caught the flow, looked good. You know what I mean? We didn't, I didn't, this is, wasn't even, like my pipe dreams weren't even thinking AMD was going to do this. You know? So, but that's what I'm saying. Like you have a market that shows stocks like this and then, you know, you got groups out there that can't, you know, can't get out of their own way. You know, they can't get out of their own way. They can't get out of their own way. Energy, with, without a doubt, right? Look. So this is like, this is what I'm talking about. This is zero gamma and bullish sentiment in the overall market. So that was the entry. You get a nice pop, right? Now you're watching AMD and Dr. Fauci, mRNA, and these stocks going ripping every single day. So you're thinking this maybe has more upside. And if you're in calls, even with this entry, you're probably barely even profitable anymore because of the time, right? So it's, it's tough, you know, it's tough. You know, a couple others had decent moves and are breathing, like Freeport, right? Ran into a upside niner and breathing. But, you know, I think this, seeing the movement on this stock does more harm than good if you're not in it because it gets you thinking that what you're buying next, you're going to catch a move like that and you end up getting in trouble and costing yourself money. You know, you, that's that T word. You really got to try to be tactical here, um, especially from now till, till August. And you got to understand too, right? I mean, you're hearing it a lot. So it's probably going to get swept under the rug for a bit, but seasonality, a lot of people are talking about it already. It really starts to get dire as you get towards the end of the month and then you run into September. You know, so you're going to, coming off that August expiration, I, I, we really need to see where things are lined up. Um, but, you know, right now there's just, there's not enough, there's not euphoria out there. You know, there's not, there's not what you think with a market coming off a run like we've seen at new highs, you know? So here, here are a couple things, right? Look at this. I don't even look at this um, indicator unless we're in a correction, a pullback. And the reason being, this is the stock to bond ratio, right? So when you get into drawdowns and corrections, you get that aggressive buying in bonds, right? And you get this ratio, shoot out bullish signals, okay? means the, the buying in bonds is a lot more aggressive than stocks. We got a bullish signal off that recent pullback. The stock to bond ratio actually fired a bullish signal off that recent pullback we had. All right? And it was because of rates, yields plummeting, and the aggressive buying in bonds. You don't get aggressive buying in bonds with a stock market at new highs, right? It's a flight to safety. No, here's what you got to understand, right? Especially the lot, the indicators we follow. They're not magic crystal ball. This is real positioning stuff, right? So this measures... The, the buying and selling in stocks and bonds, right? That's what the ratio calculates. So when, when players are buying bonds a lot more aggressively and selling stock, they're usually doing that out of fear, okay? This is not make-believe, right? People, there's, you see what's going on in the bond market. 
right? Yields, I mean, they hit a low of 113 the other day. So it's not like it's broken. You just, it's amazing with the, with the market, the, the overall market being rigged, you still have that fear out there, even with the market at new highs. That's what you're seeing in this. Okay, that's what you're seeing in this, right? So there's a fear of a global economic slowdown, right? Where people are, players are buying bonds in an aggressive way. They usually don't do that when they're bullish equities. So that, that's what's going on. You know, that's what's going on. Uh, what else we got here? Okay, we got, now this is something on the other side, right? Hedge fund exposure. This is something when hedge funds are heavily exposed to equities. That's something we look at as a sign of caution, right? Not while they're buying, but when they start selling, because if they get caught, there could be, you know, some heavy selling, okay? So you have them now, you know, pretty long, okay? What they're long is a whole other story, right? We knew coming into the last few weeks that they were all in cyclical reopening energy names, right? They were buying like there was not a risk in sight, okay? Those names have been heavy. Those names, you see, we've seen the supply there, right? Now they've probably rotated they have been, not probably, they've rotated some money into uh, tech and, you know, fang and growth. But, you know, we really don't know how much, right? We really don't know how much. So they right now, for all, what I'm getting at is they are, they were heavily exposed to equities, but on the cyclical side. You know, the other half of the market, they had no exposure to FANG and, and tech. None a few weeks ago. So, you know, just another quirky, you know, aspect of positioning in, the, in these markets right now. You know, so what we've been... Um, trying to pay attention to in the steam room is trying to get an indication of not even capitulation because capitulation is not there but we're looking to see if there's been enough selling in some of these reopening commodity higher rate plays where they're worth buying right the downside is done and, you know, I, I tweeted this out yesterday. I've been saying this for, you know, a bit. I've been saying it for the last few weeks. From what I see, I don't see capitulation. So if we're looking for capitulation in these sectors, it's not there yet. It doesn't mean that they can't bounce from here. And I mean, some of these groups are overdue for a decent rally. You know what I mean? But if we were looking for throwing the towel selling to create a nice bottom in these groups, my opinion, it's not there. It's not there. you got a lot of stubborn bulls that keep pounding the table. Every day I hear more and more of them. Buy energy, buy energy, buy the reopening yeah. You know, forget about the Delta variant. Forget about this. We're going to look through it. Do this. Do that. You know, you guys hear the same thing too. So again, we go, but we got to remember, you know, not everything has to 
lead to capitulation for a rally or a bounce, right? A lot of these groups, all of them bounced off the sentiment signals, right? They got overdone in a short amount of time. The majority of them had nice bounces. The, the worst of them was energy and energy bounced, you know? It bounced. It just didn't rally. Hell, it didn't even rally as much as crude did. Crude even bounced more than the energy stocks. But that came in. You know, this was a decent bounce. The energy stocks didn't even do that. But, you know, the material names, right? Freeport had a nice bounce. Um, Alcoa had a nice bounce. All right? So the reason why we're looking for capitulation, the reason why you rather have capitulation, okay? Because this fine, they bounce, they can bounce because they're oversold. Sentiment is overdone on a short-term basis, but these things can easily just be in a trading range at best. Because players are still too long. You know, very easily. Right? Worst case scenario, they roll over and head, out, and, and head south, and you'll get capitulation. I trust me. If these things roll over and test or break lows, I think you're going to get capitulation, right? Right. That would ultimately, like, if you're looking for that sweet spot entry, that's what you want to see. That's what you want to see. But you might, you know, you could get chopped. Or, or they, can, they can rally, right? They can rally. They shook out some bulls. It's not as crowded as it was. So they, they can even just rally from here, too. But for that sweet spot entry where they're here and you can feel good about that low, kind of like where tech was a few weeks back, a month ago, right? If you want that set up, you got to see these things, see some more selling because they're, they're still, you got a good amount of stubborn bulls in there. All right. So this is what they look like. Um, on the sentiment side right now, if you're looking to trade them, like we just mentioned, you know, you had some decent moves there. So you don't have any bullish signals, kind of uh, neutral-ish. Right? And you don't have much here on a sector basis anywhere anymore. Energy is probably the only thing that's even half decent. Uh, what else did I want to show you guys? That I showed you. Oh, so let's look at it. here. Here's the. Um, this is what they did last week. Okay. Clients bought six of 11 sectors in individual names consumer discretionary, financials. There you go. Look. All right. So they just bought them. They, they just bought them. Now, look at this. Materials. Oh, which one? No, no. Here, materials saw some real nice selling last week. Right here. Ninth and tenth largest in our data's history since 2008, hedge funds and institutional clients dumping materials and industrials. All right. You know, it's isn't it amazing financials how how bullish. They are, how stubborn they are in financials. 
rewind before the rally in financials started up, right? When you had low rates. Can you imagine if I was to tell you that rates would be where they are right now and they would love financials? You couldn't shake them out of financials? Oh, nobody wanted to touch the banks. Nobody wanted to touch the banks. You know, but now, you know, they, they shook out some bulls, but there's some stubborn bulls still there. Um, ETFs, this is ETFs. They sold uh, net sold ETFs. They bought financials, consumer discretionary. Here's um, materials, industrials, and, and tech. <laughs> and tech, they sold. Amazing. And, and look, that's the four week average is the dark blue. Client size sector, let me see, I got, uh, I get confused by the two, uh, the two things here a lot. I gotta read them like 10 times. Equity fixed income ETF, so the largest inflow. ETF, by, so this is what they did in ETFs right here. Healthcare, staples, real estate. That's what they bought in ETFs. Not much selling in ETFs, mostly buying. Yeah, ETFs, um, it was mostly buying. You know, in the value trade, everybody still likes to value trade. No, no, um, I'm talking about the uh, individual names. See, weekly flows by client, sector, and size. Yeah, ETFs, see the buying here? Oh, I said sold, I'm sorry, my bad. Sorry about that. Um, and here, overall net buying was driven by retail clients, buybacks, hedge funds, little net selling, institutions. The tech, um, which one are you talking about? This, materials? I think you're talking about materials. Oh, here, hold on. You're talking about this here? Oh, tech, industrials, materials, stocks. So the biggest outflows were sales of industrials and materials were the ninth and 10th largest in our data history. Tech just saw outflows. So no, my, that's been the case. That's been the case um, for a while we've been talking about. You know, that's, that's what made that tech set up so bullish. You know, they had, there was no exposure to tech. They had no exposure to tech. Yeah, yeah. I don't see um, all in, in tech. No way. You know, no way. The question is going to be, you know, what kind of tech and what kind of growth, you know, that's what I'm hoping clears up a little bit, even in the flow of uh, coming out of earnings season. Cause now, yeah, you, you can't make heads or tails out of it anyhow, because you're going to get reactions to earnings and stuff like that, you know, but th that I think is, is the biggest takeaway. Okay. There's no significant offside positioning anymore like there was here, here, and here, okay? 
there was significant all-size positioning, meaning there was no, they had no tech exposure. Tech, you gotta understand, they always have tech exposure. You understand? For them to be negative tech, I mean, they really gotta have a, a bias if they have negative tech. They always find a way to buy tech. Okay, so they really, really hated tech. So that, that's how all sides of the positioning were. You don't have that here, okay? But you don't have all in tech either, right? Which you probably should, all right? So you don't have that all sides positioning. Um, but that's what I think the biggest, the biggest takeaway is, is where even with rates where they are, and fears of a, the China and the Delta variant and all that, you would think you'd get that capitulation into tech and defensive growth and all that. People getting fearful of that reopening trade. You, it's not there. It's not there. You know, it's, you got it in some pockets on the other side, but not completely. So they're definitely not, we're, we just discussed that. If they're not all in tech and growth. We know that for a fact. Yeah, we know that for a fact. So that, that's something to keep an eye on um, as we come out of earnings season. And then, listen, I don't know about you guys, but the cyclicals suck. i rather look to buy tech and growth off sweeper activity anyway. You know what I mean? That's where you get those big moves. So that's what we got to look for. And, and the key thing is to, and Roy, we, we've been talking about this for a while now. The key thing to keep an eye out on as we come out, I'm talking about now the flow, um, as we come out of earnings season, new names. You know what I mean? New names. They got, they have to find new names, the buy, buying, you know what I mean? We got to find, these sweepers have to sweep up new names. It can't be the same names over and over and over again. You know? So, you know, we had a little window where everything was new, right? When they started the rotation, everything was new. Because they wasn't, they weren't buying any tech, and now you had everything was live, you know. So now coming out of earnings season and where now that you had positioning where it's at, we we have to see we have to see flow in, in more new names. They're out there. Yeah, cyclicals are a pain in the rear end. You know, unless you, you catch them early in a big move, you know, you could get paid. But after that, they're, uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's a like a perfect example, you know, of a new name. You know, and, and it doesn't have to be an I, uh, IPO. You know, it doesn't have to be an IPO, but there's just, there's got to be new names. You know, names that have been in lengthy consolidation. Um, you know, we haven't seen flow in. You know what I mean? They can't just uh, keep buying AMD, Apple, NVIDIA, you know? You could still see buying in these things, but for, you know, the rally to, to have that participation, that broadness to it, you know? That's what, that's what we want. That's what we want. Like in video, there's, there's flow every day. I, I didn't even know, I thought NVIDIA reported already. I didn't even know NVIDIA had earnings still. I thought NVIDIA reported. This thing's been seeing flow for ages now. You know, for the split, maybe that's why I'm confused. Could be why I'm confused. But, you know, we got to get through earnings season too because um, earnings season is a pain in the ass. 
And, you know, now that we go into next week too, right, this is a big week, these first two weeks, last week and this week. As we go into next week, you, you want to really start to pay attention um, to the flow, right? You want to, especially names that already have reported earnings um, that have pulled back, you know, like a, like a Roku, okay, right? When you get, wow. I didn't realize that came back like that. But you, you know what I'm saying? This is what you want to really, like even starting now, you, you want to, you know, as we're in, where it's Friday already, you want to really start to pay attention to these names because this is what you're likely to see with positioning what we, what we just went over. Yeah, Ram, they, they just, they have no interest in these things right now. You know what I mean? All the numbers on the cyclical side, guys, have been great. All the numbers on the earnings have been unbelievable. The problem is if the market's looking ahead, okay, and you got interest rates plummeting like they have been, the bond market the market is the bond market is telling you growth is going to slow globally. Okay, so the earnings that are coming in that's why they're getting ignored in a lot of these cyclical names because they rely on global economic growth and the bond market's pricing in death. <laughs> you know what I mean? No one's going to want to own these things off last quarter's earnings. That's the problem. Like, do you see these energy names? I saw a couple of these energy names. Like, I never even pay attention to these oil stocks and their earnings. I saw one big name, their revenue was up like threefold. You know what I mean? Uh, um, a month or two ago, if you would have told me these numbers would have came in like this, I thought these stocks would have ripped. But, you know, the bond market right now trumps all. Because it's predicting the future. No one wants to look in the rearview mirror. You know, but that's why what, what we need to look for, even in the cyclicals, if you like them, you want, when, they're, when they sell them off, you know, pay attention. Pay attention. Uh, today, I didn't. I didn't see anything, but could have been a roll or or something like that. You know, there's been some big size in this thing. Big size. And there, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of good looking stocks out there off pullbacks, but. You know, we don't, you know, here, even if they look good off a pullback, you don't want to be buying this when the market's pricing in some sort of debacle, you know, because you know, look, look at this. You got a lot of longs in there, even off this pullback, you have a lot of longs. which means potential sellers. You know, the reason the growth end interests me um, even more than these guys now is they've been wiped out. The bulls have been wiped out in growth. You know what I mean? They've been wiped out. So, but again, well, we'll see. You know, it, this, this is a strange, crazy ass market, right? It's crazy. You get, um, you know, th there's no interest in, in the speculative names, you know, but then you get like price action in the hood that just happened, right? It's just craziness. It's, it's craziness out there. Randomness. It's not even craziness. It's randomness. Too much randomness. 
But that's what we need to look for. You know, that's what we are. That's what I'm looking for too. You see a name like this um, that you have interest in, you know, gets hit off earnings. You see like Roku, what happened with Roku? Yeah, it got tougher, without a doubt. What, what happened with Roku um, is what basically a lot of people expected anyway, right? Because people aren't, weren't locked in their house as much and they got out, they didn't, you know, they just met their numbers. They didn't destroy estimates or whatever the case. But, you know, that with the backdrop we have right now could be an opportunity, right? Because again, that's the past. You know, so look, look, keep an eye on a lot of these, uh, these tech names um, off pullbacks post earnings. Because they, they should find bias, you know? And then you got big tech studs that, you know, these things don't even want to go, go down. Oh my God. These things just don't want to go down. Anybody even, anybody catch this one? You had some time before earnings in this pig. Jesus Christ. You, yeah, this is that's a good name too to add in an IRA. This is a stud ADSK. It has been a stud for a while. Yep. You're in it, Gordon? Yeah, this is a good looking name. This is a good looking name. So that's what I mean. If they if you get some sell the news off earnings, you're gonna there's gonna be buyers there. There's gonna be buyers there. Yeah, so even for just trades, we want to keep our eyes on these things. All right. Is everybody up to speed? I mean, listen, it's a confusing, like I just said, it's a tougher market, a com more confusing market right now. Um, you know, but there are some things if we want to stay involved, we can pay attention to and uh, try to make the best out of the situation. Right. So what the, with the evidence and information we have in front of us, that's the playbook until the week of August expiration. And then we got to be a little more careful. Yeah, th this was a nice spot too, the breakout over here, right? I know. Yeah, that, that's where a lot of these tech names, uh, these tech and growth names were um, when they first started to catch the flow of rotation. You know, the right side of consolidation. Yeah, there, there's some stocks, especially the, the big names, right? Wow. And they're splitting, I think, four for one or three for one, this animal. And, and that's another thing, guys. You know, the total opposite of what the noise out there may have you think, right? Fundamentals don't matter. The companies that have the fundamentals, they're getting, you're getting paid in them. You know what I mean? You're getting paid in them. The street's not overlooking them anymore. Yeah, you know, we went through a period, John, where it didn't. You know, we saw a lot of crap go bananas. Um, but, you know, my point being is that, you know, you find a nice growth stock, like we were saying, a new name um, that has the numbers, too, to back it up. You know, and that's, that's where you get these moves right now, you know, outside of the hood and the random stuff. You know, this is where you really get paid. So, all right, but we'll see. We'll take it day by day, week by week. We have a little bit of a playbook until the, the week of August expiration for now. And, you know, by that time too, earnings season will be done. You know, things hopefully uh, loosen up, free up. Yeah, next week, guys, too. Next week, the flow should look a lot better. Just cleaner, you know, cleaner. Like now, every, every decent bet was earnings. 
bet, you know? Every good looking sweep, there were quite a few of them, but they're all earning sweeps. Zynga, oh, they had earnings today? Zynga. This thing is like a slow death, this stock. Just it doesn't move enough, no? You gotta tuck this thing away or something because uh, you'll pull your hair out of it. All right, guys. Thanks for uh, stopping by, everybody. Tomorrow's Friday already, another week down the toilet. I'll see the majority of you tomorrow. Good luck the rest of the week, guys.